hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the sixth online Bitrise user group. Um, we're hoping you have a wonderful day wherever you're joining from. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Akash Antosh, and uh, we'll start in, in just a second. But while we're waiting for everyone to join, uh, there's, there's always a couple of things we wanted to mention. So as always, the webinar itself is being recorded and we'll be uploading it to our YouTube channel uh, a couple of days from now. Uh, for anyone joining us already from over here, thank you for watching and uh, hope you have a great time and don't forget to subscribe. Um, so this one, this Bitrise user group is a special occasion uh, as we're celebrating the launching of our new contributor program, the Bitrise Experts program, which uh, is basically uh, the step up from our previous writers and speakers programs and is for everyone uh, who wants to contribute to the Bitrise community, whether it be with articles or speaking at events, creating new steps or anything else. And it has some very cool new rewards, um, some new t-shirts, some new socks and some other things. Um, yeah. And <laughs> This occasion is also special because all three of our presenters are actually early, early joiners to the um, experts program. So I want to thank all three of them for that and for joining the webinar as well. Um, today we'll be covering all of our bases. We'll have uh, a talk about getting started uh, with Rise for Android, for iOS, and for Flutter. Um, as always, this is community content. So talks are not owned by Bitrise. It's all the speakers. Um, and questions can be asked during and after the talks, both in the chat box and through the Q&A tool. Um, so feel free. And uh, after each presentation, we'll have a five minute time um, so that we can go over all of them. So without further ado, I think we should get started. And our first presenter today is Wisdom Nwakacha, uh, who's joining us from Nigeria. He's a software engineer with a computer science degree and has considerable experience in mobile development and native Android, iOS, uh, Flutter, technical writing, open source and community building. And he will be talking about single bit rise CI for Android. Wisdom, stage is yours. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Akos, and um, welcome everyone. All right, so let me start. All right, thank you everyone. And once again, welcome to the Bitrise um, blog event. All right, so today I'll be talking about um, setting up Bitrise CI pipeline for Android. All right, so definitely the first question that might come to our mind is what is Bitrise or what do they do? So Bitrise is a continuous integration and delivery, which is CI CD platform as a service with main focus on mobile app development, which is under iOS, Android, React Native, Flutter, and so on, because the list keeps on growing. So it is a collection of tools and services services here to help you with development and automation of your software project. So as we go on, I will try to explain a few of the things we have here. So I know the next thing you have on your mind is what is CI, because that is what we're talking about today. So um, CI, which is continuous integration, is the practice of automating integration of codes from multiple contributors in a single software. All right, so this tells us that when you make changes, from possibly any of your CI um, platform, your Git platform, maybe GitHub, um, Bitbucket or GitLab, you make changes from your local repository down to your remote repository. So automatically there is something that should automate, that should always be checking for the quality of your code. So as we go on, I will try to explain more of this. So this is Android, so what is Android CI? So Android continuous integration makes development life development life cycle easier. Every time we push new code, we run a set of new tags to check nothing was broken by our code changes. So Bitrise makes it very, very easy. So as we go on, you will see how easy Bitrise makes this more than every other CI CD platforms we have there. All right, so example, when we push codes, we, we can run Android link check to check your Android link, to check if everything is all right. You can check your unit test, you can check your UI test, you can also build your APK or app bundle, and you can also send your app to Google Play Store. How easy that is. So you don't have to kind of go over to Google Play Store to upload your, your, your new APK or your new app bundle, which is quite recommended app bundle. You just do that from your, 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 your local repository. You, you make all your changes, you push automatically with Bitrise, it's automatically send everything down, your new changes. 
to your to your Android and Google Play Store account. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about, because we're talking about CI and CI, so we need to know some certain terms, which are the builds. So what is a build? In CI, a build is a series of jobs specified by the app's workflow, which is a collection of steps. So in addition, CI typically uses um, a build server to implement continuous process of applying quality control. And you might want to know what is quality control. is a process by which entities review the quality of all factors involved in production. So what is a job? A job is a collection of steps. So that's easy. All right. OK, so I, this is the, the UI in, in, in Bitrise. So this is the build. And this is how, how it is. So when you have a failed build, you will have this in the, in the, in the, in the platform that this build has failed. And you also have the message that if it's, if it's the merged one or you pushed it, and you also have the time it took before the build finished. And you also show you the trigger time also. And it will also show you the branch, if it's a master branch or you used a different kind of branch, development branch or any kind of branch, you named it. So you see how easy it is. It also shows us the date here. And one good thing I like about Bitrise, which I don't know if other platforms do have it, but which is quite good, is you can schedule your build. You can immediately start your build or you can schedule, give it a particular time you want it to build and it to build at that set time. So that's how cool. And just look at the interface, it's very easy to understand and very simple. So definitely you have some other interface that might give you issues to go around. You might want to ask questions, but with Bitrise, you see how easy it is for you. All right, so the next thing we'll talk about is workflow. So a Bitrise workflow is a collection of steps. So when a build of an app is running, the steps will be executed, executed in the order that is defined in the workflow. So you have some steps. And what is a step? A step is the build tax and it contains the code that performs the build tax. All right, let's just go check it out. Now, we talked about the, the, the build and now is the workflow. Okay, this is the workflow. And I said workflow is a collection of steps. Now these are the steps, activate, SSH key, git clone, bitrise, and cache pool, and install missing Android, do anything with the script, and Android lint, and Android unit test. So these are the steps. And I said that a bitrise workflow is a collection of steps. So that those are the collection of the steps. The collection of those steps are what we call the bitrise flow. And the steps is the build tax, and it contain the code that perform the tax. So this is a this is a step. A git clone is a step. It contains the, it contains the, the code that does the git clone. You come to Android Lint. It also contains the code. Sorry, contains the code that does the Android Lint. Android Unit Test also contains the code that does the Android Unit Test. So that is how it is. And we will also go back to the platform. So I will have to show you how it works now. But you see how easy it is. You don't have to write any code about it. You just drag and drop, you click, and it appears. OK, so let's go to the next one, which is code signing. So code signing in Bitrise is the process of digitally signing your app as a means of guarantee that the code has not been altered already. So just like you have in Android Studio, you want to sign your app to put it on Play Store. So Bitrise has that, that section or that feature in their platform where you can drop your sign-in so it can be easily done for you to push it to Play Store. So to deploy our apps to an online store, such as Google Play or Apple Store, code signing is absolutely crucial. Yeah, it is. So this is it in the, on the Bitrise platform. So you just have to take your Keystone file and upload it here, and that's it. OK, let's go to the next one, which is the secrets. So secret holds information like keys, your, your, your secret keys, important keys. API keys, it's important to know that your secrets are not shown in the bitrise.yaml file. So, and one good thing you know is that it is being encrypted for you. So you don't have to bother if someone else can get it or not. So once you store it on bitrise, it's a trusted platform that it will be encrypted for you. So and you can easily access it there. So you don't have to be going, don't have to be going around to think about where and how to hide your, 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 your API keys, just do it with bitrise. And they have that feature their platform where you can easily drop it and it will be encrypted for you. So you have it here. 
where you can just drop the key and you drop the value and you save. That is how easy it is. And you have the section where you can add new ones. You can add as many keys as you want. So the next one is the uh, environment variable. So environment variable consists of a key and a value as well as optional attributes. So this can be defined on the levels of app workflows or steps. So on the platform, you have it here. So automatically, when you build with, when you want to set up a new project with, 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 with Bitrise, automatically it would detect your project location, your, how many modules you have in your project, and also the variant for you if, it's, if it is debug or if it is released. So you might want to add a new one. If it's your choice, you can add a new one for that. So let's say you're building a multi-module -model project in Android, so you can also create a new one. So if you have one checking for, for your module of app and variant of the of the bug, you can have a different other feature, other modules you created in your app. And according to the variant you want to use the bug or release, you can easily add it here. You don't have to code. You just with Bitrise, everything is easy for you. So just focus on your coding. And when it comes to CICD with Bitrise, forget about coding. Just set it up as easy as ABCD and, and it's very fast to set up. So let's go over to the next one. So which is trigger. What is trigger? Trigger prompts the build action. So something have, have to push the build before it will, it will definitely work. So that is trigger. Trigger has that feature. So with trigger, you can push. You can actually set a trigger that, okay, whenever I see a push, let this build. Whenever I see a pull request, let it build. Whenever I see a tag. So that is the work of trigger. So you can add as many triggers as you want on Bitrise platform. So the next one is stacks. The stacks, the stack indicates the virtual machine that you use to run your build. After adding your application to Bitrise, we'll select an appropriate stack for you. So what Bitrise does automatically, when you create a new project with them, they will check your project and they will check your stack and automatically assign one that is suitable for your, for your project. So you can also have an option to add as much as you want. On what I have here, this is a, a, an Android project. So automatically it chose the Android um, stack for me, which it does. So when you use an iOS or a Flutter, it will definitely choose the stack that suits your project. So what I have here is the Bitrise YAML file. I know some other CICD platforms, they only work with the YAML file where you just go and do the coding, write this the YAML code you want to do there, write how you want your flows and your jobs and your steps. But with Bitrise, you don't have to do that. So your YAML file contains the Bitrise build configurations. So we here, I didn't write anything here. I did not write anything here. I just follow the steps and automatically it generates it in the YAML file for me. Now, there are two things that is quite cool because when you go to GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, you check some people's projects. You're definitely, you really want to see the YAML file to be sure of the CI3 platform they're using. But with, with, with Bitrise, you can store it on their platform or you can decide to store it on your own, uh, your, your app repository. So in this case, I had to choose that platform. So you can also choose the other one if you want to. So that's it, thanks. Now, the next step for this is we just have to go into pure practical steps. We are, we'll build a, a very simple Android application, then we'll push it on, 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 on Bitrise, Bitrise, sorry. Then you see how easy and simple it is. All right, so let's just start on that one. Yeah, so I just want to do this because I felt that some persons might be total beginners or something, so I decided to start it so from the beginning. All right, so, sorry, let me, all right, so create an application, click on file, click on new, click on new project. Okay, let's just take empty because we don't have much time. So let's call this, we try this. For example. All right, so click finish. All right. All right, so we have our application and we just have one text view, which is um, hello world. Okay, now, so let's try to push. Uh, this is going to still be. Okay, 
Okay, so let's push this to, so we are using GitHub. So let's push our application to, to GitHub. Okay, so let's. All right, so, so fast. All right, so this is it. We have our Bitrise bug example on my GitHub platform. Okay, now, so let's go over to Bitrise. Now, what we do on Bitrise, you have to add a new app. So you click on new app. Now they brought a new feature, which is to add the new app from your CI, CLI, which is your the terminal, or you can use the web UI. So for now, let's work with the web UI. Okay, so now first thing you have to choose your account. So I've chosen mine already, because I already have one account with them. Then you want to set the privacy of your app if it's public or private. So for example, so let me select um, public for this one. So we click on next. So now you see they support several platforms. You have GitHub, you have Bitbucket, you have GitLab and other manual. So we're working with um, GitHub. Now, one cool thing is I have all my apps on, on, on GitHub here, so I can load more if I want to. So I have all, uh, including one private. That's funny. Okay, now, so this, we're working with this one. So we want to select this Petrize bug example, so we click on it. All right, so you have to choose the branch you want um, bits, uh, Bitrise to check. So for now, you're working with the master branch because that is only a branch I have, which I created, which automatically created. Okay, so just give it time to configure your app. So you can just see how easy it is. Um, uh, what I'm doing is just clicking and clicking and clicking, and the steps are not so much. They're very easy to set up. All right, so now if you notice something, my project in GitHub is an Android project. So automatically the system knows that this is an Android project. And it has also known that I ha have only one model, which is my app model. So we have to click next. Now the variant I'm working with for now is the bug. You know, I'm not working on release. I don't want to push the production else I would choose to release. So, but for now it's the bug since I'm still testing. All right, so this section is for you to confirm if everything is all right, if everything is okay, you can change. Now you see the stack automatically gave me Android because Android is my project. My project is an Android project. So I specify the variant and it chose, automatically chose the, the, the app model for me and also the location. So with this, I'm okay and it's fine and I confirm. So let's give it time to save and build configuration. All right, so here you can choose an avatar or they will choose one for you. So this is a test project, so I can choose skip for now. Now, this is one of the crucial parts, which is with this webhook, it will automat be tried to automatically start a build every time you push your code into your repository. So you can manually do that or they will do it for you. So why, why I want to stress myself. So I would learn to do that for me. That's it, it's all set. How, how, you see how simple it is. So let's just check our build. So I'm done with the building. I'm done with setting up a CI in Bitrise. I didn't write any code at all, but even it's all set up. So it's giving me my first build. Now we have our workflow, so you can check it out here. So let's give it some time. Yeah, but this normally takes like 
might take like two minutes plus. So just just what it is to soon be done. While we wait, if you have any questions, everyone in the audience, just let us know. I'm gonna type it in the chat and or use the Q and A tool, and I will get back to you. So while you're waiting, like Rox said, any question, you can send it across. Okay, just wait one moment. Okay, some seconds and it will be done. So see, it giving us the time, telling us with this time we should know the time it took before it completes our build. So um, while we're waiting wisdom, we have a couple of questions. Um, and the first one was, why does the build start immediately after the app is created? I can get you why the build start immediately after the app is created? Yes. No, no, no. I created the app push to to GitHub, then I created it. Now, what Git, what what Bitrise does is automatically at first when it creates your your project, it will definitely run the first build. Yep, that's right. After I check if everything is all right. So then after this build, subsequently you can now now on this particular section, I'm waiting for it to finish up. So I would actually push to GitHub, and they will see how automatically it will detect the push and also run the build. Yeah, uh, I also had a question uh, about uh, having this for server deployment. I can't really uh, speak about that, uh, but uh, if if you would uh, comment that question to the YouTube video when we upload it, we'll get back to you. There. <laughs> um, we have another question. Uh, once configured, can we run builds for different modules? What configured? Uh, I guess the project. I didn't really get the question too, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Naha, could you uh, specify uh, what exactly would you like to do? And uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, Alok is saying, uh, I'm getting an error while running this. Um, could you let us know where you're getting the error and what error you're getting so we can help you yeah. out? Yeah, I can just show the error so we can know where the problem is coming from. Just remember, remember what is the CI? CI is that when it runs, automatically finds error, you're gonna have a fade build. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, Jeffrey is saying, is there any way to, uh, oh, sorry, it's it jumped over. Is there any way to speed up the YAML install uh, portion of my build? Uh, yes. What you have to do is to reduce the amount of Work, workflow you have because when you have so much workflows it's going to take a while to do that so um people are asking what if we have one more than one module like app data domain how can we set it up so that, i think that's also what the the other module question was about if i'm correct yes yeah you just okay yeah okay so let me answer that question on that one you just have to create a, a different workflow for them Anyways, I will still go around to the other aspects. So these questions will be answered as long as I go towards the section. Because if I'm answering them now without them seeing the practical aspect, they might get confused. So yeah. we are successful. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's successful. Now we've gotten our first successful build. So let's go back to our dashboard and see that for ourselves. Now, one good thing I would like people to know about this is, let me head over to my mail. I don't want to talk so much. All right, so each time you get a successful build or you got a failure build, we try to send you a mail. So with that, you would know that, ah. Okay, now let's say you are more like a team lead and you have a lot of working on that. So when you start getting some failed builds, you stay at home and you get emails like you ask him, Charles, what's up with the failed build? 
why are we having so much failed builds? So it, this is a very good way to notify the developers, the users that I have a failed build, I have a successful build, and this is quite this is a very nice feature of the try. So all right, okay, let's go to the platform. Now this is it. Okay, so let's say I click on it. Okay, no, 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 no. Let me go back. We are running a little bit out of time, so we'll 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 have to um, move on. Uh, but, uh, wisdom, if, uh, if you could actually, uh, while we're moving on, answer the questions in the chat, um, that would be awesome. So, yeah. Um, sorry, don't want to cut you off, but <laughs> we will have to move on because we're running out of time. Thank you so right. much. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, it was awesome. And, uh, yeah. Um, right. thank you. Let's move on. Okay. So. Our next panelist is going to be Alex Logan, who's joining us from the UK. Um, Alex is a coffee enthusiast who happens to make uh, Apple ecosystem apps from time to time, uh, specializing in whatever is new. Alex loves Swift UI, Kanban, WatchOS, and hopes to use them to build the next generation of wonderful apps. And he's going to be talking about kickstarting BitRice for, for iOS. Um, just the one thing that I have to note, no, we're not uh, specifically going to talk about React Native builds uh, today, but feel free to ask uh, any questions you have in the chat and we'll get back to you. All right, Alex, stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you should be able to see a Mac screen. Yep, yep. Yeah, perfect. So first of all, hi, everyone. Uh, like we just said, uh, we're going to talk about kickstarting iOS apps with BitRise today. Uh, first up, hello. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm currently an iOS engineer at YourMD, working on a self-care app called Healthily. Um, I also work on a small coffee app in my spare time, um, just so you can like write down cool info about your coffee while you're brewing it and so on, um, just to help you improve like really specialty coffee. Um, and then finally, an app for developers where you can just store code snippets on your Mac and your iPhone and things like that and share it between all your devices. And so the goal for today is probably going to be like a lot of talking because essentially I want to show you real world examples. I want to get a pipeline up and running for iOS within the confines of this talk uh, to kind of show you just how easy it is because um, we've all been there with alternate solutions where it takes quite a long time. Um, and, you know, in today's current iOS situation, I think we really do need, uh, yeah, we really do need CI. We're getting things like, you know, Apple's telling us we have, you know, a couple of hours to ship for the new iOS, which is not very quick. You know, I've seen pipelines where um, it's taken a few days to update the Xcode version and so on. So, you know, you need something quick and ready for it. You know, apps are getting bigger and bigger. We've got app clips and widgets, which make apps build slower because it's extra targets to build. Um, we've got extra bits like, um, oops, we've got some extra bits like our, um, uh, sorry, our like architectures making it slow. Um, and we got like more pressure than we ever have before from the app store. So, you know, we want to get apps out there fast. We want to make sure we're ready for whatever's coming at us, whether it's getting featured or new things changing all the time. So we really do need to set up something like a CI. Um, and typically what happens is you get some developers and you tell them, okay, we need a CI, let, let's set one up. Uh, usually the developers have asked for it. Um, you sit them down and you tell them they've got a week or so to build something, whether it's on uh, Jenkins or, or Circle or any of the various different solutions you have out there. And They'll sit and try and build it. Um, and this could take longer. I said a week, but it can take a lot longer. I've seen it take two, three weeks in the past to set these things up. And then what happens is even then, sometimes there's like compromises. It doesn't hit the benchmark that you've set for it. Um, you get hiccups, you get instability. Um, and then sort of a problem of it not being able to update fast enough. So new Xcode comes out and you spend a while updating not only your own personal machines, but then you've got to mess around with like your CI too. And it's just kind of a bit of a pain. Uh, so developers aren't very happy when this happens. They don't want this. Devs don't want to spend a full day preparing releases. You know, you want to click a button and like go out to the pub or go get a coffee or something. Um, so we really do need a CI solution these days, especially in iOS. Uh, so the goal is to actually show you getting one uh, from zero, a full working CI that can push out to App Store Connect 
Um, the idea is, you know, my kind of normal workflow is when I push code, I want a basic pipeline that tests things. And then when I push into my main branch, it should push to the app store and then that build should be ready to actually go to the store itself. So what we're going to do is recreate my actual personal pipeline. Um, so we're just going to quickly go over what we want it to do and then we'll actually make it. So we need to make sure that this app does everything that we'd expect um, kind of from zero. So we need to make sure that it's building our app, which kind of makes sense. You've got to make sure it builds. We want to make sure it's tested. Uh, we should have unit tests and stuff, and we should make sure they're passing. There's no point in putting a dud build out on the internet. We want to sign the app, which is where a lot of people get stuck. And then we finally want to build an archive and ship that archive to the store. Now, you don't want to do this every time someone pushes code. You could imagine it being an absolute nightmare if every time someone pushes code, there's a new build available on the web. We don't want that. We want to make sure that we have a basic pipeline and then like a proper app store pipeline. So first of all, we're going to create this, this first pipeline, just building and testing. Um, we're going to quickly create it just using a web editor entirely. And it will only take about a minute or so just to set that up. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. And why I think this is really useful is you can do this, you know, as kind of part of your sales pitch to get a CI. So you might be struggling to convince people at your workplace or wherever it is that you need one. Um, you can set up a basic one so quickly that it just becomes a really, really easy sell. So I'm going to go straight on the web editor. I'm going to make sure this app's private. I'm going to select a repo. So just from my personal repositories, I'm going to select just a normal iOS app called Marvel Search. And this is just a normal app. I've not done anything to it to prepare for this. It's just as it was. I'm going to let it add an SSH key for me. So we want to make sure it adds the SSH key so it automatically can connect to the repo by itself. Um, you could do this manually if you want, but I tend to not do that. I'd rather let Bitrise just do it for me. I trust it. Then we select our branch. So for me, I always want to build the main branch usually. So I'll just pick main here. So we want to scan the main branch. So what this is going to do is pull down kind of some of the finickier stuff. So it's going to work out kind of what project it is. So it will know from this or this iOS. Um, it will also pick out the Xcode schemes for us. So we can pick a scheme and build it. As we can see here, it's done that straight away, nice and quick. We have a project build config. It says iOS. Uh, it says Marvel ski at scheme name of Marvel search or Marvel search tests. In our case, we just want to select Marvel search, which is just our normal one. And in this instance today, what I want to suggest is a pipeline where we're building for the app store. So I'm going to select app store. And you can see here, one of the cooler bits, but I can just pick my stack right here when I set up a pipeline. So instead of messing around updating Xcode, I can literally just select from a dropdown that I want Xcode 12.2. And that's it. That's all I need to do to set up Xcode 12.2. I'm going to hit confirm. Just going to take a second to save. It's even going to do something super cool and grab my app icon. I love seeing a nice little icon there. Let it select that image. And then we're going to let it select a webhook. Now, the webhook is kind of a, one of the cooler bits. So you might know what a webhook is already. But essentially, what it will do is listen out for certain events happening on your Git project. I'm going to let it do it for me. But what this can do is use uh, kind of a listener to make sure like when a pull request get, gets raised, it runs a certain pipeline, or when you push to a certain branch, it runs a certain pipeline, which is really cool because it means that you can always, you know, recreate more complex CI systems just with a couple of clicks online. And we can customize this webhook if you want. If I look at this, we won't wait for this to finish just because it'll take a little while because this is like a real world kind of big app. But essentially, this has already started a build for us and the workflow that we've set up. Where if I just quickly go into the workflow editor just so we can visualize it. What we're going to see is that we've got kind of those initial steps I talked about, so building and testing, all sat there and waiting for us. And we can then immediately work on like extending that. So we have the Bitrise cache pull. It's going to make sure we can have a script step. It's going to install some profiles. It's going to test it. And it's going to deploy those outputs from testing. Um, so we already have our first kind of bit of a pipeline, the important bit, right? This is a sanity check that you kind of want to run on every piece of code that gets pushed. But of course, in real world, you kind of want to do more than that. So 
we can take things a bit further. So we've got this really basic pipeline that works already and you could leave it there if you wanted to. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. For some people, um, that's okay. Certainly in hobby apps, I found that quite useful just to make sure that like I have this pipeline running. So, you know, as soon as Apple finishes its event and says, okay, there's a new Xcode, I can just wait for the email to say that it's available on Bitrise and then just have all my apps running just to test that everything's okay straight away. Certainly saves me the hassle of re-downloading everything myself. So we do have those other steps and we do want to add them in a separate pipeline. So we need to sign, we need to archive, and we need to go straight to App Store Connect. Now these steps do have some prerequisites. So the other stuff we could just do, we could just click through on the editor and run it and it was okay. This time, we're gonna need a couple of things set up in advance for us. Now, these are all things you can do very easily. So you're gonna to need to make a signing certificate. So you do this just on Apple developer website. You make a signing request, you download the certificate, and we need to export the P12 file and set a password on it. And then you also need an API key for App Store Connect. Um, this time you just go on App Store Connect, go on users and access, click on keys, and it guides you through the process yourself. And you need to make sure you save that, which is nice and easy, just watch you straight through it. And that's all you need. Once you have these two, you have every single thing that you might need to actually get your app up and running on Bitrise properly. So we're gonna do these final steps now, and I'll show you how quickly it is, um, but how to do this. Um, if you have ever used an alternate kind of platform, you'll kind of know this can take ages, especially code signing. Um, I hate setting up code signing usually. So we're gonna nip on and add those now. I'm gonna show you some other cooler bits too while we're at it. So first of all, we're gonna create a new workflow. Bitrise has this cool thing where you can create a new workflow based on an existing one. So this primary workflow we know already works. So we're gonna make a new one called App Store Connect. So it's based on primary. So it's cloned that over for us perfectly. What we're gonna do is first of all, is make sure our triggers are a bit different. So this time we're gonna make it. So if there's a pull request that targets main, we're gonna run this new workflow. So we're gonna run App Store Connect um, and get rid of the other one. So what we're gonna do is make it so we have this new workflow where whenever a PR goes into main, it will ship a build for us. The reason I like to do this is quite a lot of the time, part of your workflow is you'll get this build up for code review and then like you need an actual person to test it. So this way that build will be sat there waiting for them to test it straight away, which is fantastic. We also, while we're in here, need to set up a couple of things for code signing. So we're gonna head over to code signing and those files I mentioned that you need you literally just have to upload them in here. It's nice and easy. You just literally drag and drop your P12, get the code signing certificate there so Bitrise can actually sign your apps and add your password. Uh, in this case, mine is cheese. Um, that's not my real password, don't worry. Uh, make sure yours is a little bit better than that. And then what we also need to do is add some file storage. So our P8 that I mentioned earlier we need to have access to that during the pipeline. So we can take usage of a file storage in Bitrise to store it and then reference it later on. So we're gonna call this auth key. I'm gonna drag over my auth key. Again, this is just the one that you got from App Store Connect. It's really easy to do, just a couple of clicks. And Bitrise has populated this variable for us. So this variable here, bitrise.io auth key URL, we can use this at any point um, in our pipeline where necessary to get access to it. This is gonna come in really, really handy, handy later on. So now that's set up, we need to go to our app for a second and set something up for signing. So we can make sure that we're using our app store account in here. So we're gonna to go to team on our app. So the team settings for our app, and we're gonna add our Apple developer account. Now this is just set up on your Bitrise account using the P8 that I just told you about. So we can see here, we've selected Alex's personal account. To set this up is nice and easy. It's just under your account settings where you've already set up your GitHub from earlier on. You can go into the Apple developer account 
and just add a key. This is just using the information that you'll have got earlier from App Store Connect. So really nice and easy. Just head back over to the Marvel Search Editor. You can see that our build from earlier on is running. It's taking a little while, but that's okay. It's a really big app. There's a lot of tests to run. We get back into our workflow editor. Go to App Store Connect. Now, the three steps that I mentioned we need to do are actually three steps that I just built straight into Bitrise. We don't have to do much customization whatsoever. So what we're going to do is under after Xcode test for iOS, because we don't want to run any of these steps if it doesn't pass, we're going to add um, provision with API. So we're going to provision with the App Store Connect API. We also want to archive the app. Luckily, we have a step for that. We're going to add archive. So archive and export for iOS. And then, of course, we want to actually go to Vatunes Connect. And in this case, I'm going to use the loader step to do that. So we have our three steps already. And these need very minimal customization to work. Most of it's literally just passing it some like preset variables. So for provisioning, all we need to do to change here is change our distribution type. So I want to go to the App Store. I want a full real build. So I hit on here. I hit App Store, and that one's done. For archive and export, all I have to do in here is, again, I want to set the export method to the App Store. I'm going to leave everything else alone. You can change this if you need to, but I'm literally just going to set that and leave it. And then deploy for iTunes Connect. Now, this is where we're going to need the key that we set earlier. You could use your Apple ID and password or an app-specific password, but I tend to prefer doing it this way. So what we get to do is under API key URL, in here, you can see it's given us a nice guide on what to do. It's even explaining if we've used generic file storage, we can just populate a variable. So we're going to do that. We're going to hit enter value. We're going to insert the variable, and I'm going to search for auth key, which is my variable. And that's going to automatically populate that with the auth key and then the issuer ID. You can get this from Apple developer. It's exactly where you went when you got the key created in the first place. And I'm going to hit save. And that's actually it. That pipeline will now run on pull requests. It will now go to the app store. And that's a fully signed working build. And that's all you actually need to do. And if I want to trigger it, our build from earlier on has worked. I can schedule one manually in here, App Store Connect, and start it. Now, we won't be able to see it finish uh, while I'm speaking, but hopefully uh, what we'll see by the time we finish today is a, a finished working build already on uh, App Store Connect. And that's it from me. So uh, thank you all. Um, just quickly, uh, make sure you've added your certificate and API key to code signing. That's usually where people go a bit wrong. Double check that you've selected your Apple developer team in the app settings. And then the one quick tip I give you is consider adding like a build number script. Uh, what you want to make sure is that like when each build gets generated, the build number is unique. So App Store Connect is happy. And what I tend to do here is set a commit hash or something like the uh, timestamp just to make sure there's no clashes. But other than that, I leave everything alone running exactly the same way I would on my local device. That's it from me, uh, Swifty Alex on Twitter. If you have any more questions, feel free to just message me. I can hopefully give you guys a hand. And that's it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. That was awesome. Uh, we'll wait just one second. Let's see if anyone has any questions. Uh, until then, uh, I'm actually going to paste our uh, public Slack URL in the chat. If uh, there's any questions that we can get to today, feel free to ask them there or go to our presenters themselves. I'm sure they will be happy to um, help you out. So if there is nothing, uh, just one second. Yes. Okay. Then we will be moving on. Thank you again, Alex. And our next presenter is Vladimir Ivanov, uh, who is joining us from St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, he's a solutions architect at EPM Systems with a passion for mobile technologies. And uh, he's a public speaker and a content creator at vvsevaladovich.dev. And uh, he's going to talk about tweaking further pipelines. Vladimir, stage is uh, yours. Uh, thank you, Akos. Thank you very much. 
So I'm going to start sharing my screen in a minute. Uh, one moment, please. So, so it should be number two. So please put pluses in the chat if you if you see the slides. Not yep. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, not yet. Okay. Just just tell me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, as always, yep. I, I need to, yeah, I need to start sharing. Okay, so great. Uh, so hello, everybody. We're excited to, to see you all here. So today I would like to talk about tweaking pi uh, Flutter pipelines. So as, uh, as already said, my name is Vladimir Ivanov. I'm working for EPM Systems as a solution architect. I have experience in different mobile technologies. So in Android, React Native, Flutter, something else, uh, but right now I'm, I'm working with Flutter. So that, that's what I'm talking about, the CICD for it. So uh, if, you, if you missed somehow, Flutter is a new cross-platform framework uh, for mobile development and not only mobile, for, for web and desktop as well. It's really popular for, for mobile. Uh, it uses a new Dart programming language, which is basically is not, not used anywhere else, but, but for that, uh, but whatever. And the framework itself is inspired by React and other declarative UI frameworks. So you may have heard about Swift UI, Jetpack Compose, and all that stuff. So so Flutter goes goes the same way, and that, that's good actually. So we're as I said, we're we're having a project with Flutter, a mobile application, and what we want uh, for that application is that we want uh, to be deployed fastly and frequently. Right, because everybody wants to see the result of the developer's job, and we want to be that job to be of a high quality. And th the most important thing is that we want all of this together. So CI/CD helps a lot, and Bitrise as well. So we, we are using Bitrise for building our application and deploying to stores. So I want to tell you how do we do it. So uh, what we have, what we achieved with the current setup. We actually achieved that stakeholders get a new build each day and maybe several times a day, and that, that's going on uh, for us. We don't have any errors on the static analysis or on unit tests or, or on the code style, so this is great. And right now we achieved the 45% of unit test coverage and we're working on increasing that, that thing, so that, that's good. And um, uh, this is possible possible because uh, we have set up our Bitrise pipelines. Uh, so what we have right now, first of all, we have a PR verification pipeline. So it, it runs every time uh, somebody submits a pull request or, um, or, or updates the pull request. So we verify unit tests, we verify static analysis thing and, and all that stuff. Uh, then we have the development builds. So for developers and QAs to, to get the earlier result uh, of the work and also so we have uh, QA staging and production builds for Android and iOS. So uh, in a click of a button, we can deploy builds to any of those environments for both platforms. So that's great. So let's, let's talk about the uh, uh, workflows. So first workflow is a PR verification and you can see uh, almost all the steps here. So we're, we're installing Flutter, we're installing the dependencies for our application, we run Flutter test, we're doing something about about code coverage. I will be covering that later. And then we're deploying the build to the Bitrise, not to iTunes Connect because, well, the, the, no, no sense for that. And we're sending some information that, hey, pull request is verified. You can merge it now. So yeah, installing dependencies, Flutter test, Flutter analyze uh, of coverage and deploying the coverage to, to Bitrise. Uh, there are some nuances here, of course. So if you start, running the Flutter Analyze for the project you set up uh, from the wizard, you will see that you will uh, you, you don't have any type errors despite having some. And uh, this 
This is the problem of the default setup of the Flutter project. So first of all, you need to go and create an analysis options.yaml file and enable some strong mode. And then you will see the type errors that, that you have in the code. This is the first thing. The second thing is that actually Flutter Analyze can return uh, infos, errors, and uh, warnings. But even if you have only info messages from the analy analyzer, you will have uh, a one uh, return code from it. So it will fail your pipeline. And uh, this is bad because you might want to, to have to, to not have one for, uh, error for just for info messages. So what we did, we actually wrapped the Flutter analyze uh, script and it, it is really easy just uh, checks that there are no errors and if if there are errors it exits with one if not it's it says hey we don't have any errors so th that's fine so we're we're exiting with, with zero and we actually run this script on bitrice not not the flutter analyze itself okay Another thing is that Dart uses a lot of code generation because it doesn't have a reflection mechanism. So this code generation is for serialization, say for build value or for JSON annotation or other libraries. And it's also used for state management libraries like Mobix or, or others. So what we do, we actually generate this code every time on the on the build because we don't commit that, that generated code to uh to the code repository for reasons so we run the the build runner on on each of the build and we're deleting conflicting outputs if you know the old version of of the of the thing is is not correct yeah moving on to test coverage so obviously you want to run tests and publish the test report but you also want to to have the coverage and to analyze the coverage and the Flutter works uh, like the following. So it generates the Elkov info file. And the good news is that if you're using GitHub pipelines or GitLab or, or other systems, uh, you may have the functionality of reading that file out of the box. Unfortunately, it's not the case for, for the Btrice. Btrice works with the unit reports. Well, well, fair enough. So in order to... To, to have it displayed, right, uh, you need to, to do some additional steps. And this is what we're actually doing. So we, we display the coverage during uh, in HTML format, but we need to convert the info file to, to this format. Also, what we want to do is that we want to monitor that every new pull request coming to the code base doesn't, low, doesn't lower the, the test coverage for our project. So worsening the, the quality. So that's why we, we want to monitor uh, on this. Uh, there, there's a downside for the test coverage for Flutter. Uh, well, it's not working. Uh, it, it's working only against files that are covered under test, but it's it's out of scope for now. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is how the, the code coverage report looks like. And we, we have this report generated for uh, every PR verification workflow so that that's great so how do we implement actually this so we're using uh, the following thing the problem with flutter test with right like running test out of the box it, that it doesn't generate some machine reading readable content so we need to adjust it uh, what we're using we're using uh, flutter test minus minus machine so then it outputs the JSON and then we're activating the the unit report tool. And this tool is capable of converting this JSON into a JUnit format, which is readable by, by Btrice, which is great, which is what, what we want. And also we need a tool uh, called Elkov. Uh, so we're just installing it with Brew. And th this is how we're getting the, the HTML coverage report. So that's good. Um, then how to maintain the minimal coverage. So you have two options options basically first of all you uh, you may want to ensure that uh, the coverage is not lower than it was before the pull request but i don't know how to do it like you you need to store the coverage somewhere read it from there uh, i don't know how so we're going for the minimal coverage so we're just setting up the threshold right now it's 45 percent and we're ensuring that uh it, it doesn't drop below that threshold you actually need 
some some custom code. Uh, we developed a package that is called check coverage. Uh, we're going to open source it soon. I, I think in, in a week. So uh, if you want to know when it happens, just follow me on Twitter. I will provide my handle later. Let's let's move on. The next thing is the, the build phase itself. So uh, all the workflows are pretty much the similar. They just provide different environment variables to pretty much the same workflow. So what do we do here? What, what are the important parts? Uh, the important parts is that you need to set the iOS bundle versions um, before uh, archiving the, the iOS thing, uh, which was talked about previously. Uh, then, then we're deploying to iTunes Connect for sure. Then we do pretty much the same with Android. So we're changing the Android version code and sign it and deploying to Google Play. So why do we need that? Uh, well, because uh, if you deployed a build first time, uh, th that will work. But if you deploy build with the same version code uh, or version number for iOS, uh, iTunes Connect will reject it and Google Play will re reject it as well. So you need to bump the, the build number. Uh, you obviously can do that manually, but this is error prone and th those are separate commits and so on. So th this is not convenient. So what we do, we're just using the special bitrise step, which is provided for you out of the box. And it allows you to set the, the version number for both iOS and Android with, with, with separate steps, obviously, but that, that's okay. So we, we're using them. Then we're deploying to stores. And this is basically the, the continuous deployment, right? Deploying it as, uh, as fast as possible. Um, and we're, we, we can run those tasks as frequently as you need. As, as I already mentioned, we're deploying several times to, to Google Play, Alpha Beta channels, and to, to iTunes Connect. And optionally, you, of course, can notify your team members in Slack and MS Teams in, in other the messages, I believe there is a plugin for Discord integration and so on. So this is what we do. So what we achieved, we actually achieved uh, a high quality of our application. So we're, we're doing really great. So we, we don't discover any like su super critical bugs. So that there are mostly cosmetic ones or those that are hard to test. Um, and we're doing fast and easy deployments. So we're deploying into any of the environment with just a single click. Uh, uh, business analytics and QA engineers can do that. So it, it just button click. It doesn't require the interaction from the development side. So the developers just need to write code, submit the merge requests and merge them. And then all the deployment can be done very easily thanks to p -trice. Well, uh, if you're if you got interested, please visit my website uh, vivsevelovich.dev. You can subscribe for the updates for the new posts there. So please please do it, and of course follow me on Twitter. Here's my here's my Twitter handle. Thank you very much. All Any right. questions? Thank you so much for your presentation, Vladimir. That was awesome. Yep, we're gonna wait to see if we have any questions. Um, in the meantime, I will be pasting some links in the chat for everyone. Uh, well, if we don't have any questions now, but you think of something later, uh, just reach out to Vladimir. I'm sure he'll be happy to help. Yep. Um, and yeah, um, so uh, thank you everyone for coming. That was uh, it for today. Uh, thank you to all three of our presenters. You guys are awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, don't forget to check out our new Bitrise Experts program. Um, don't forget to join our public bug uh, Slack channel on, on our public workspace. We have a dedicated channel to the bug. So if you have any questions, that's probably the best place to uh, post them or directly to our presenters. Um, we also have a feedback form that uh, we share all the time. Uh, let us know what you think about the webinar, what you thought, how you enjoyed it. Uh, we're always trying to improve things. And if uh, you got inspired 
by these awesome presentations and would like to hold one the next time. Uh, we also have um, a speaker form where you can apply and then we'll get in touch and uh, see what we can do. If you have any other questions, uh, you can also send me a message on Twitter. I pasted my, my handle uh, in there and that's basically it. So if, yep, there seems to be no further questions. Thank you everyone so much for joining and hope to see you next time as well. Guys, start thinking about which kind of plushie you want. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.